He has two wins in his career over Morris. One of them was a pin at the NCAA tournament. That was the last time they faced each other. And then in the, uh, the duel on January 30th of 2015, it was a wild 12 to 11 match. Morris jumped out to a big lead. Forties came back on him, nailed down the victory. So this should be a good one. So Forties has had his number. And he's ranked eighth in the country. The junior is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's 10 and one on the year. Morris is 16 and six. You'll see a lot of Pittsburgh guys from Pittsburgh. There's just such good wrestling up there, yeah. and, and they take advantage of, of being in that location as they should. Morris, well, he's nearly in on that right leg. Great Morris able to back out. Great defense there by Morris, getting his foot on the mat. That's what you got to do when your leg's up in the air. He does that immediately, gets out of trouble. Pittsburgh perennially in the top 25. And as you say, location is, is always important, not just in real estate, but in recruiting as well. <laughs> and the state of Pennsylvania, as we all know, is so great in high school wrestling. Yeah, I, I don't even know if there's an argument to be had that it's the best state yeah. in high school wrestling. I mean, that's just how it is. And... Uh, Wrestling's just really good up there. This is a nice little back and forth match. And Morris little, is going to be penalized. There a little extracurricular yeah. there. Or at least, I think, just a warning. Again, these guys know each other. Man, these guys are getting right after it. Lots of shots, lots of action. This is a fun match. Thoris does get the takedown there off. He's had several great shots, but that was the first he was able to finish. Yeah. He's got that bar on the right side extremely deep right now, looking for a bar and a half on the other side. Now he's going for that wrist. And what Forrest is going to try to do is once he, he gets this bar to where he wants it, he's going to try to start running his feet around Morris in a circle to turn him. Well, now he's going back to that half on the right on the left side. Excuse me. Forrest with a dramatic takedown there. Yeah, that was impressive. I mean, it was forceful. Well, you can't you can't straight up slam the guy. You got to return him to the mat. And there there's no, we saw Morris fight off so many good shots. There's no way to stop it when a guy picks you up, like Forrest did there. So that was pretty impressive. Morris got hand control and he's out. Good stand up. But Forrest did get almost a minute of riding time. 51.5 seconds is what the clock shows as the first period winds down. That'll do it for the first period. Big takedown by Dom Forrest was the really highlight of that period. Morris able to score and escape. Yeah, Morris uh, deferred choice in the third period. Forrest picks neutral, and we saw what he could do in neutral. He was yeah. in on so many good shots. Probably the right choice there. Forrest is 10-1 and one this year, so another Pittsburgh guy that might not have a ton of matches, but his record is extremely impressive. He's in on another shot. Great finish running it. Oh, and the official... He had he was putting two up. Hey, great job by Morris not stopping wrestling there, continuing the work. And they are in a situation here where Forrest might have that finish. But we'll see. The refs haven't given anything up yet. Morris is still fighting on the edge. Not much in bounds right now. And these guys still in a 50-50 position. The Pittsburgh coaching staff is saying this has got to be two, and they're going to stand them up. So somehow Morris able to get out of that. And, you know, in basketball, sometimes they talk about officials anticipating the foul right there, anticipating the takedown. Yeah. It sure looked like there was no way Morris was going to be able to get out of that. And then when by the time he was on the ground, Forrest didn't have control. Yeah, great reaction time there by Morris to scramble his way out of that and get back into a spot. And Forrest is just... Putting on a clinic with these takedowns. Again, he still hasn't been given. Looking for back points now. He's got the Turk in. 
He's looking to break the angle there and get the back points. And there's a one count, so no points yet. He's got to get a two count for two back points. But Morris is not in a good spot. He's got to start crawling forward to try to get that leg out of the Turk. And Fores is just going to keep racking up the riding time as yeah. they sit in this oh, yeah. position. So Morris has to get moving. He almost was out of trouble, and then Fores gets him right back into that Turk. And that's the end of the period. I'll wrap up the second period. So, so far, we've seen Forey's able to do well and control when he is on top, but he has been dominant in neutral. Yeah, he has. And I, I think with the way that first period went, when he had a lot of good shots but didn't finish, has kind of changed his mindset. And every time he's in on a shot now, he's looking to lift and slam Morris, yeah. and it's been working. So Morris takes top to start the third period. Forries is to his feet, looking to escape, and he's out. 5-1 Forries leads, plus a minute and 45 seconds of riding time. And two more points. This has been a great performance by Dom Forries. Yeah, Forres was the ACC runner-up last year, finished one round shy of All-America honors. That's the second stall call against Morris, so that's one point for Forres. But as I was saying, he's a Forres is a really quality guy. One win shy of All-America honors. Led Pittsburgh with 68 points scored in dual matches last year. And yeah. He's just pouring it on now. He's in on another shot, looking to finish the single, and there it is. Almost got two swipes there. Boy, he's thinking about the bonus bonus points now. He's got it right now. Yep. It's nine to two. He's got over two minutes of riding time. So it's essentially ten to two, and he gives Morris a little shove at the end after the whistle. And he's going for the cut here, so he wants more takedowns. He wants more points. Wants to secure that major decision. So optional start, that means he's won't get down in the standard starting position, as you can see. But Morris not really moving. He's got to be careful just, just here. Just buying a little time. And right. that's what I was just about to say. He's going to get hit for another stalling call. So he does get the escape, but he's still down eight points right now. Four, he's looking at bonus points. Yeah, and that stalling call, you, that's just unacceptable. You've got to move a little bit on the whistle. There's another takedown. Four is just putting on a clinic right now in neutral. He is Pittsburgh's highest ranked wrestler. And again, going up against 14th ranked Jamal Morris. Morris has three stall calls. He really can't afford to pick up another one here. So he's going to have to be careful on the edge of the mat. You see these guys having hard breaks every time, pushing off of each other. And Corey's cuts him again. Just gives him the one. 13 seconds left. Not a whole lot of time for Forey's to work, but he goes back to work. And another Two take more. Down. It has been clinical from Tom Forey's tonight. Now he's working that bar, trying to run it. Going to run out of time, but 15 to 4. Tom Forey's looking like a stud in neutral right there. That's the first bonus point win that we've seen tonight, and it gives Pittsburgh a 7-3 to three advantage as we roll right into 141 pounds. And this is second-ranked Kevin Jack of NC State against 31st-ranked Nick Zanetta of Pittsburgh. Kevin Jack coming off of a big week against North Carolina. He beat number three Joey Ward 10-4. And then he followed that up with a 10 to 1 dominant decision over number seven, George DiCamillo of Virginia. So Kevin Jack is just on a roll right now and looking like a national title contender. He's got seven matches that he's won by bonus points in duels. And you got to say, in that Carolina bout, 
And that was, they, they ended on 141 pounds. Yeah, number was, two versus number three, It was that was the headliner. That was the highest billing. And Kevin Jack came in there on the road and dominated. And to me, that really says something when you're able to, to handle that spotlight and then come out and perform at your best. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, credit to both coaching staffs for making that match that everybody wants to see, the final match. I think that's a great thing for the sport. Absolutely, I agree. And, uh, I mean, it was... I was just watching on TV for that one, watching on ACC Network Extra, but it was a great atmosphere, it seemed like, on the, t on the television broadcast. And look at Kevin Jack walking him back to the center before he works, starts working again for that takedown. And, and there it is. Get it. He needed every bit of that real estate from the center of the mat all the way to the edge, but he does take down Nick Zanetta. Great takedown there by Kevin Jack, and I'm telling you, this guy is wrestling as good as anybody in the country right now. He had an overtime loss to Randy Cruz of Lehigh very early in the season. He's on a 22-match winning streak since then, yeah. eighth longest in school history. And like I said, that those wins over Ward and DiCamillo were very, very telling about just how good Kevin Jack is wrestling right now. Jack, of course, was an All-American two years ago. Last year, he was the ACC champ and NCAA qualifier, but he did not All-American last year, and the Wolfpack coaching staff has said he's he's got a chip on his shoulder right now because he didn't All-American last year, and that's been pushing him, and he's, he's doing all the little things right now, you know, trying to get back onto that podium at Nationals. And the ACC is so good at 141 pounds, too. I mean, with Joey Ward of UNC, George DiCamillo of Virginia, we mentioned both those guys already. Uh, they, the ACC is so good at that weight. The guy that takes third at the conference championship is a legitimate All-American contender still. Yeah. So it's just under a minute left to go in this first period. And Zanetta trying to limit Jack, trying to slow him down a little bit. Some of the fans here have won installing. They haven't gotten that. We've seen Jack just rack up so many bonus points. And again, on that streak, you say, hey, that's the eighth longest streak. Obviously, that's impressive anyways. But especially at a place like NC State where they've won seven individual national championships, you know guys have gone on long streaks. And Jack in the midst of one of those right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, they've had a lot of really good wrestlers, but not many have had a longer winning streak than Kevin Jack is on right now. and In his 25 matches wrestled this year, he's won 14 of them by bonus points. Yeah. And a caution to Zanetta. Fans getting on the referee here. I tell you, the, one of the Jack's best positions is on top. He's just really, really good on top. I mean, he's obviously good in every position, but he's really at another level on top. Kind of like what we talked about earlier with Sean Fawes of NC State, who won his bout at 125 pounds. He's very tall for this weight class, and that, that lankiness, that size, makes it really difficult on top. And there's a stalling warning from Pittsburgh, and now here comes Drew Headley. He does not agree. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that the referee called that one when he did because there were a few times where Zanetta's first move, he was basically trying to crawl out of bounds, and then he makes the call there. So can definitely see uh, both sides of that call. It was, it was a long time coming, but in, in that situation. Drew Headley and Matt Coker are both head coaches of Pittsburgh. That came about just a couple of weeks ago as fourth-year head coach Jason Peters was dismissed in midseason after an incident at the Midlands Championship. And so this is a team that has had to now make a transition of losing their head coach and, and going with Coker and Headley. But those are two guys that both wrestled at Pittsburgh and obviously had been assistants before. I think that gives them an advantage to have already wrestled at Pittsburgh. Yeah, and they were both very high-level wrestlers at yeah. Pittsburgh. They were both All-Americans. And uh, there's an escape. As, as we were saying, though, uh, Coker is actually second in school history with 151 wins. 
is one of just 12 Pittsburgh wrestlers to qualify for nationals all four years he wrestled. So, two impressive wrestling resumes there on that coaching staff. And they've got another former Pittsburgh All-American and their volunteer coach, Tyler Nauman. So a lot of experience on that Pittsburgh coaching staff. Experience for those guys, and then also a nationwide coaching search is underway. We'll see if they if they hire out or if they hire from within. But obviously, very difficult for a team that is in a very difficult conference. You look at five of the of the six teams in the ACC are ranked, and right in the middle of the season like that, a difficult to handle that midseason. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, you don't. You don't want distractions like that. You always try to limit distractions during the season, and there's no getting around that uh, for the Panthers. But, you know, you've just got to go on, and, and you've, you've got who you've got on the coaching staff and on the roster, and you've just got to make the best out of it. And on the schedule here at NC State, they'll follow it up against Iowa State. Great finish there by Kevin Jack, popping out the side, getting the takedown. And they're out of bounds again, and the NC State coaching staff tells Kevin Jack, cut them, stand them up, let's keep going for the takedowns. Yeah, this is about the juncture of, of each match in which Kevin Jack is in a position to try and go for more takedowns. Yeah, he's just so good in all positions, so long. I, I really think that helps Kevin Jack. I remember when he came out as a true freshman, he was supposed to redshirt, got pulled out of the redshirt, and... I was always thinking this guy's a guy who's going to be a 49-pounder because he's just so tall, but he's managed his weight well, stayed at 141, and it never seems to be an issue with him. With him. He's always on weight. He's always in shape. And there's another low single turned into a takedown on the edge of the mat. And I imagine he's just going to let him up one more time. But it, we'll it, was, it was interesting because that cut came when it was 4-2. Obviously, that makes it just a one-point uh, match at that point, but... And Jack just does not get taken down, and so you don't have that same fear. And, it's, and I don't think it's any disrespect to, to Nick Sinetta. It's more of just a credit of how good Kevin Jack is right now. Yeah, and his confidence has to be high. I mean, when he won 22 matches in a row, and in the fashion he's done it, he's got to be confident. There's a stone call. He's got the cradle locked up. No back points there, but he does get the takedown. So Kevin Jack starting to open it up here towards the end of the second period. And he's trying to follow up. If you're just joining us, Dom Forey's had a dominant performance at 133 pounds, the first bonus point performance that we've seen. That has given Pittsburgh a 7-3 lead. And so Jack trying to draw NC State level. Oh, nice tone attempt there from Jack as the period wound down. He was trying to get a quick two count, but... No dice. Nine to four is the count heading into the final period. He's got a minute, 58 seconds of riding time. Gonna start on bottom here. Kevin Jack is one of two NC State wrestlers undefeated in duels this year, and we're seeing why. I mean, he's just so dangerous. Got that quick escape. Tried to turn it into a reversal. Zanetta Fleet. Only for the moment. Jack is just being so aggressive. I, I gotta like that. I mean, if you're watching this match, he's up ten to four, but he's not letting his foot off the gas pedal. And a lot of face action there. Normally, the referee is gonna warn guys for uh, get getting hands to the face, but Jack just pushing right through it. It's not stopping him. He returns the favor there a little bit. He's in on another low single, and that's going to be two. He's able to turn that around so quick when he's in on that single. Yeah, he's he's finishing as soon as he's in, which is the key. I mean, if you if you shoot and then you're in on it and you kind of wait to start finishing, the guy's got a chance to react. But Kevin Jack's not giving him any reaction time to uh, to tie him up, and he's just finishing immediately. Riding time has been clinched for Kevin Jack, so it's essentially 13 to 4 right now. And I imagine we're going to see him going for more points. He just held yeah. up three fingers to the coaching staff saying, 
he wants to keep going for more points. So He's got a lot of work to do if he's going to do more than a major decision. With only 45 seconds remaining. Yeah, of course he needs 15 points to get the tech fall, which is worth 5 team points. Or, of course, there's always the pinfall worth 6. That is a stalling, stalling call. call. So that will help. And now Kevin Jack wants to start in neutral. It's like those stalling calls I feel like are like a, a shark when he smells blood in the water. He's going to need a takedown and then some back points here against Zanetta. He's in on a shot deep. Switching off. And there's the takedown. So 25 seconds left for Jack. And right now they're just going to go out of bounds. So 15-5. And he's going to let him up again. 22 seconds left in regulation to add some more points. And Kevin Jack's aggression is just impressive. There's another stolen call. Another and stolen call. So that's a three-point play right there. And he's going to cut him again. And he needs one more. He's running out of time. 19 to 6. And Kevin Jack. What a He's going to finish this one. 14 point victory over Zanetta. He nearly got the tech ball there after, you know, with about 30 seconds left, it looked like he didn't have a chance at it. And uh, he just put his foot down on the gas pedal even harder. And 14 point victory. For Kevin Jack. 20 to 6. And that ties us up at 7 apiece. And really there, you know, Zanetta got hit with those those stalling warnings and there were the stalling warning and then a couple of uh, stalling points. Yeah. And he was able to kinda kinda hold the ball, run down the clock a little bit, and that was just enough in the end. So here we are, 149. This is our final bout before intermission. Again, Andrew Sanders, Ryan Tice with you here. And this is uh, Bo Donahue of NC State is wrestling at 149 as the Wolfpack not going with 11th ranked Sam Spino tonight. For Pittsburgh, it is 31st ranked Mikey Ricciato. Yeah, I was talking to the NC State coaches before the match, kind of trying to figure out the, the play here. And, you know, they said uh, Bo Donahue has been our 11th guy on the team. You know, there's 10 starting spots. He's our 11th guy. He plays an important role on this team. And... Of course, he has a win over Ricciato, Ricciato earlier this year, so uh, they're giving him a shot to go out there in the starting lineup, and I'm sure Ricciato is looking for revenge after getting, I believe he got pinned yeah. by Donahue at the Midlands. So he's out looking for revenge, Donahue looking to do it again. And he's a guy that's that's wrestled a lot for NC State during his Wolfpack career, Bo Donahue is, so starting is not a new thing to him. Donahue's a redshirt junior from Centerville, Virginia. Ricciato is a senior from Pennsylvania. Ricciato's a two-time NCAA qualifier, was the ACC champion in 2015 at 149 pounds. He's actually wrestled Donahue twice in his career and has split those. So he does have a win over Donahue back in February of 2015. He's in deep on the shot there. There's the finish. So a great start for Ricciato. A couple of takedowns here in the first period. An escape for Donahue makes it 4-2. to two. Last year, Ricciato wrestled at 141 and lost to Kevin Jack. 3-0 was the decision. Bo Donahue also wrestled against Pittsburgh last year. Donahue won 6-5, narrowly at 149 pounds, over Robert Lee. Fourth all-time meeting, NC State leads this series 2-1. Both teams won at home until last year, where the Wolfpack scored a 28-6 win at Pittsburgh. Again, that's the only road win in the series thus far, Pittsburgh Trying to get some revenge for last year. And in a good spot. Tight 7-7 right now. And the team score. And Ricciato's already taken down Donahue a couple of times. 
We've seen a lot of points in these last four matches after yeah. starting off with that heavyweight match that, uh, you know, had a 5-2 to two final score and so many overtimes. And now it's just that nonstop action these last four bouts. Six first period points between Donahue and Rochado. Yeah, we can only hope that the five bouts after intermission will be maybe half as good. All right, we'll hope for 100% as good. <laughs> Uh, exactly. But even if they are half as good, we'll still see some quality wrestling here. And that's, I mean, that's what we expected to see tonight between NC State and Pittsburgh. Yeah, you've mentioned it before. Pittsburgh's ranked 25th in the coaches' poll. They're one of three ACC teams in the top 25. And then there's two more out of the six that are receiving votes. You, uh, NC State's obviously ranked 8th. So this is a nice top 25 showdown. And We've seen it early. Seven to seven is a team score. Machado. Nice little defensive stop and then reshot from Machado. And Donahue's trying to fight it off. What a little exchange we have there. Yeah, I really thought Machado had two there. And Pittsburgh's coach agrees with you. He's yeah. going to ask for a official review. Yeah, Drew Headley, you see he's got that challenge flag out. Awfully close. And the referee, it looks like a saying this is not reviewable. Headley better be careful or he <laughs> might pick up a, a warning from the referee. He said, what's the, what's the point of having this if I can't use right. it? Right. Just kind of tosses the flag after that. Great low single shot from Donahue. Machado trying to fight him off, though, not giving up the takedown yet. That's close to two. Referee has not awarded it yet. Donahue's got to try to pop out the back door. Rochado is kind of high on him. No takedown yet. Referee says nothing yet. Donahue's got to try to take him right to his back. Now they're back up both on their feet. This has been a, a crazy exchange. And look at that. The reversal wow. and then the escape. What an exchange there. Oh, and then after the whistle, after the whistle, Rachado not only shoves him, but then tells the crowd to get up a little bit. And he pushes Donahue into the table. And, you know, we saw a little bit after the whistle in prior bouts. That's over the line. Yeah. That's too much for Mikey Rachado. Yeah, there's, there's no excuse for that. I mean, they, he was clearly out of bounds. The whistle had already blown. Well, and he then was, went for it. I don't know if he wears contacts, but he was kind of grabbing at his eye. I don't think he's – it didn't look like he was trying to put a contact in back, but he was kind of standing over yeah. there and way out of bounds, almost on the wood floor, and Rochado just kind of gives him an extra little shove. So The officials are at the table now going to review this. So what's the scenario here, Ryan? Well, that was quite a flurry we saw. It I'll was, tell you that no much. doubt about it. I mean, that was a, a crazy – what, 20 seconds of wrestling or so? So the referees are at the monitor. Five to five is the count as it stands right now. We'll see if that holds up after the official review. How hard to believe that it's five five because it has felt like Richado has been in control for almost all of uh, the, the first, and you know we only have 30 seconds remaining here in the second period, but that little flurry where, I mean, again, Pittsburgh thought that Rochado had two. They didn't. They said it was not reviewable. And then Donahue was able to turn that around on him after, uh, again, it was borderline. It was questionable whether there was two points. So uh, Donahue has been, been right on the fringe of, of giving up a couple more takedowns. He's turned it around, and again, it's 5-5 five -five as of right now. So the officials are getting a look at it. Yeah, credit to Donahue for continuing to wrestle through all that. And same with Rochado. I mean, both these guys, you, you think they've given up too, and they're still rolling around there, funking around, and uh, no, no points, you know. So five to five is the count, and referee's still looking at it over there on the monitor. Yeah, and hopefully uh, here in a second we can also get a look at what they're looking at. And it appears the officials have made their decision. Looks like they have confirmed the takedown for Donahue. Obviously, 
and Coach Henley doesn't agree. And now Pat Papalizio is talking to the official saying, hey, I want you to look at the shove. Here we go. Here's they were, I assume they were looking at the shove. This is what they were looking at is, is did Donahue get two points? Can you see that Granby from Rochado? You know, the referee has to give him reaction time. and uh, But they did confirm that takedown. And I'm told that they were looking at, at Donahue's hand position and seeing if he had the two points or not. And then, so Co Coach Pat Papalizio wanted to see about the shove after the whistle, and they will not review that. So 5-5, five, five, 30 seconds left here in the second period. This has been a good one. So Donahue and Rochado still going toe to toe here as the second period winds down. Two guys that have split their previous two meetings, yeah. and this is what you would expect when that's the situation. And five I have to five. I tell you what, Ryan. I mean, already there's there's so much passion in wrestling, and I think it's going to be a little more heated here in this third period because of the familiarity, because they have split, and a little rivalry here between Donahue and Rochado. And Machado got, got going a little early there. You, know, you said it might get a little heated, especially with the situation. Not only is the match, the, the individual match tied 5-5, five to five, the team score is tied 7-7 seven to seven right now. So this is a big one in terms of bigger implications. And you look at who NC State has going after the intermission. And not that Pittsburgh doesn't have some quality wrestlers like Ramani at 157 or Campbell at 165, but... NC State is going to have the numbers advantage in terms of ranking going forward. So, richardo has got to be looking at this bout as one that he has to have. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's got to be in the back of his mind. But uh, the, the way these two guys have been going at it, I mean, I, I don't think we're going to see these guys get passive or anything. So, there's the escape. Richardo leads 6-5. to five. Got about a minute and a half left in regulation. We've already had one overtime match. Might be headed for another. And you see that Donahue's kind of got a front headlock. Richado's got his arm tied up, working for a two-on-one. And they are wrestling, go out of bounds. We'll start back in the center. Both coaching staffs yelling out instructions. In that very brief break, and we're going to have some blood time here. Is Donahue? Oh, that's what he was getting when I, when I thought he was uh, contact had fallen out. I didn't realize he had a cut under his eye. But they clean him up right away and send him back out there. And you can see there. I think NC State feels good about Donahue's conditioning because they didn't want to waste any time there. Right. Exactly. Right, Andrew. They sent him right back out there as soon as they could. I mean, it was it was one swipe of the of the you know gauze or whatever, and back out there. Oh, Donahue goes for a little duck under. Rochado catches him. He's got him in trouble right now, big time trouble. Mitchell's taking a close look here. Got that half in. He's looking for the fall, but the there it is Mikey Rochado. Well, you said he was looking for some revenge from the pin from Donahue, and he does get him back. And now he plays to the crowd. Anytime you're on the road, you can play the villain if you want to, and Rochado relishes that opportunity. Huge 